Today we are going to learn about what is method chaining, what is function chaining and where we use in the Java program and what is the advantage of using uh, function chaining in, with respect to Java 1.8 and how we can use it in the real time programming and actually in some places you might see this kind of type of coding people try to uh, do a practice of doing method chaining and filter uh, function chaining and it is very difficult to understand how it actually works but if you guys see how i am writing a program how i am converting a simple method into a method chaining and how to uh, deal with the function chaining so you guys will be very uh, feel more comfortable whenever you see code like that so without any further delay let's get in and out of it Here we are going to talk about method chaining and function chaining. First of all, we want to know what do you mean by chaining? Chaining means one of the other, right? And method means like we are going to call one method of the other method, right? Or uh, one of the other, right? So it is a way of calling different methods in a single line. Instead of making one method and get the output and then storing in another variable and then using that variable, if you would again call another method, that's say like a way of uh, you know tr typical traditional way of writing it. That is also good. But if you write to, uh, if you try to make uh, your program more concise, you can also follow these best practices where you can able to call a different methods in a single line. So how is it possible? So let's say I have a class called demo. Inside I have a method uh, called de um, public demo set int of int i, where I have a like first variable int x, and then I'm actually overwriting the uh, no argument constructor demo as system out dot println inside demo, and then I have a method. There is one method called public demo set int of where I'm passing if I pass the value int it is going to pass uh, the value x to this and then return this so and I have another method where I have like you know public uh, void print of where I'm just simply printing high x so what I'm trying to do here is I have a class I have a variables I have a constructor I have two methods so in these two methods in this method I'm going to return the object of this particular class which is nothing but return of this right so return of this is going to return the demo right demo object with value x whatever you're passing in the i right and then in this print i'm going to just simply print high x right so in our actual main uh, program where i have a main method i'm going to create demo d equal to new demo of so whenever i say new demo of it is going to get called and it is going to print inside demo that is what it is going to be the output and then d dot set int of one so when i say d dot set int of one so this one will be passed here and set int of one right so this one will be passed and the value of this object will be set to one and then that object will be written back. So this object is written back, but I'm not storing that object reference anywhere, right? So instead of what I'm doing here is with the use of dot operator, I'm using, I'm passing that particular object reference value to call the another method called print. So on the same objects, print method, I'm calling it here. And since that object is having the value i or x as one, so the print method, this x will be, getting the value as one and that is why I'm going to get the output as high one. So this is the way of writing method calling, method chaining, sorry, d dot set int of dot print of. So by calling two methods simultaneously in the same single line, right? This is the way of how to uh, write a method call, method chaining in our Java program. Now let's come into the function chaining with respect to function interface. So whenever we create any function interfaces, we can able to call multiple function interfaces the single line of code. So it is a way of calling different functions in a single line. That is what function chaining means. Now I'm giving you the example. Let's say I have a function two functions. Function f1 is equal to, if I pass the value i, then I'm going to get i dot two, i into two, sorry. Okay, which means like whatever the value I'm giving, I'm going to get back with two times multiplied. And if the function f2 is equal to, if I pass the value i, I'm going to get addition of 2. Let's assume that I'm passing value of i, 5. So how I can do multiple functions here, right? Let's say I want to do both the functions with the value for, for the value 5. What I can do, there is a two methods here. One is and then, another one is compose. It is all about how you want to uh, apply the chain or how on, how you want to apply the function, which one you want to apply first, right? So if I say f1 dot and then f2 dot apply 5, what it will do? First, this 5 will be applied here to the first f1. So which means 5 will be coming here. So 5 is given. So 5 into 2 is nothing but 10, right? So 10 and then this will be second. So this will be applied second time. And then so 10 will be passed to this one. So here 10 will be coming. 10 plus 2 will be 12. 
So final output will be output will be 12. The same thing here if you see the other way around. So here f1 dot compose of f2 dot apply a 5. So here this 5 will be applied to first f2 and then that object will be passed back to f1. So 5 will be applied to f2. So which means 5 plus 2 will be 7. Right. So this will be 7. Then 7 will be passed over to f1. So 7 into 2 which is 14. So this output will be 14. So you guys should aware about these two particular concepts with respect to functional interfaces where they can call one of the other in a different ways. Right. So because if you pass in a different way, the outputs are different because the logics might be different, isn't it? But if you think about f1 dot and then f2, which means like the name itself, you can easily identify first this one and then this one. Right. But if you say compose, compose means like it's, it's you know, decreasing or degrading it. Right. Which means like from here you have to apply it. So you can have n number of functions, you can have n, any type of functions, you can apply it. But the logic behind that is if you want to go by one by one and then you can uh, specify that particular order, you can go for and then. If you want to go in the reverse order like the other way, then you can go for compose. These two things I thought like you guys should be aware about uh, with respect to function interfaces because uh, when you see a program uh, in the real world, like once uh, most of the applications are getting to 1.8 version, so people might write the same logic in uh, this uh, way of writing it. So you might uh, be wondering like how to um, uh, assume what will be the output or how they are writing the logic. So I hope you guys will understand this one. So I'm going to write the same programs in my Eclipse so that we will see the actual output. Wish you the Hello everyone. This is the practical session where we are going to see what do you mean by function chaining? What do you mean by method chaining and how to use it in the practical? So um, practically when we go and write the program, you will get in and out of it. But uh, let me explain whenever you say like functional chaining, it means like it's a way of calling the different functions in the same single line. So let's say you are writing on program wherein you have a method and that method and the method returns some data back, right? And using that object uh, data and you are calling another method. So instead of doing that way, like we can also write in a, a compact way of uh, writing in one line, the same functionality you can achieve it with the help of functional chaining and method chaining. First of all, let me go through the method chaining how to call different methods in the same single line. So I have written a class with the main method in here and here I'm going to create a class called demo. So in this class, I'm going to have, uh, let's say a string uh, name and then I'm going to have a um, method called public void set name of so here what i'm trying to do here is if someone calls this method by passing some variable value string n then i want to set this one this dot name is equal to n so that whatever i'm passing here this will be set to this variable and then i'm going to say public wild if you want to call someone calls this print method then i'm going to call um this variable i'm going to display this variable assume that sys out um saying that name okay guys so here what i'm trying to do here is i'm having on class where i have a variable value i have a string name and then i'm trying to set this value here and then I'm just printing it here, right? But if I want to print this one, right? Then I need to say, actually I'm going to uh, return this right object. So it should be a demo object. In this case, I need to return this object. So return this. So here return this means it is going to return the object of demo with the value set as whatever you're passing here. And then we're going to call here. So what I'm trying to do here is now I'm going to create an object for this class demo d is equal to new demo of and then I'm going to say d dot set name of I'm going to pass the variable value let's say red sys 
tech so now what happens is uh, on this object on this method i'm calling i am passing this value here and this new object has been created with this value right so now what i'm trying to do is whatever i'm passing here now i'm going to call the print method dot print off right so let me go and run this program yeah so this is printing let's say calling called um let's check right so this is how actually i am concatenating two methods here right like i'm calling this set method and then whatever i'm returning back the object i'm calling this print method so this is the way how you can write um method chaining like you can create a number of chains similarly you can have functional chaining what do you mean by functional chaining so you can have a number of functions and you can call all the functions in the same line so assume that i have a function um, which accepts integer and then it, it returns integer um, i'm calling it as f1 is equal to uh, let's say if we pass the value i and it is going to return uh, i into two two times multiplication right and similarly i will have another function let me copy and paste it this is a function two if i pass the value i it is going to give me i plus two now i want to try a couple of things i want to first apply f1 dot and then f2 dot apply of five what will be the output so here the output will be first time what it will do is whatever you are pa passing the value right the five the apply function like this five will be passed over to the first function f1 so which means five into two which means like 10 and then that 10 will be applied to f2 which means 10 plus 2 equal to 12 so output should be 12 and there is another method um, where we can say f1 dot compose compose of f2 and then dot apply of 5 so this is another way of calling uh, the other side so if you want to apply first f2 and then f1 then you have to go here so here what it does is first this 5 will be applied to f2 so 5 plus 2 will be 7 so 7 will be applied over to 12 on this uh, first function so 7 into uh, 2 will be 14 so this output will be 14 okay let me go and run this program to see the outputs and i want to print this once let me uh, print this values over here and similarly system dot out dot print ln this values here okay let me go and execute it if you see 12 and 14 right so what happened here is this 5 is applied to the first function first so that is the reason like if you pass 5 it will return back 5 into 2 which is 10 and then whatever is the value of that output of that function f1 that will be passed to input uh, to the f2 so when i pass 10 10 plus 2 will be 12 the other side like if i if i want to apply the function f2 first then i have to go for compose so when i say 5 so 5 will be passed over to the f2 function so when i say 5 passed then 5 plus 2 will be 7 that 7 will be passed to f1 so 7 to 2 14 so that is how you are getting 12 and 14 so i hope you guys understand this functional chaining so this is something like we use in our uh, big programs where you are writing multiple functions and you want to concatenate and you want to uh, aggregate so many functions in uh, real-time programming so this is very very important to understand how this aggregation works like how to uh, write in a single line and even if you see any code which is written with one single of line of code so you should be able to understand how it is actually logically um, it works so i would recommend you guys to write the program and execute in your eclipse and see how it goes thank you guys bye bye i hope you guys have understood the concept very clearly but still if you guys have any questions or any clarifications required please post your comments in the comment section 
and I will be more than happy to assist. Keep watching all our videos. There are a lot more videos to come. And if you guys like this video, please hit the thumbs up button and also subscribe to the channel and share with your friends. Don't forget to hit the bell icon. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next interesting video, guys.